Welcome to Our Lady of Lourdes Parish in Massapequa Park, New York. I'm Monsignor Jim Asante. Delighted to be celebrating with you today the Feast of Christ the King. Let's pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. To better celebrate Mass, we look to our hearts and confess our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all of the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Lord have, Lord, have Christ, have Christ, have Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so we pray. Let us pray that all people will acclaim that Jesus is Lord. Almighty and merciful God, you break the power of evil, and you make all things new in your Son, Jesus Christ, who is the King of the universe. May all in heaven and on earth acclaim your glory, and may they never cease to praise you. This we ask through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the ancient one and when presented before him, the one like a son of man received dominion, glory, and kingship. All peoples, nations, and languages serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kinship shall not be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Thy Lord is King, He is robed in majesty. Thy Lord is King, He is robed in majesty. The Lord is King, in splendor robed, Robed is the Lord and girt about with strength. Thy Lord is King, He is robed in majesty. And He has made the world firm, not to be moved. Your throne stands firm from of old. From everlasting you are our Lord. The Lord is King. He is robed in majesty. Your decrees are worthy of trust indeed. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, for length of days. The Lord is King, He is robed in majesty. A reading from the book 
of Revelation. Jesus Christ is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, who has made us into a kingdom, priest for his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming amid the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. All the peoples of the earth will lament him. Yes, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Alleluia, alleluia. My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Pilate said to Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? And Pilate answered, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. For this I was born. For this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. And this is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks for being with us for this celebration of Christ the King. You know, I, I lived for a number of years with a wonderful priest named Father Paul B., great priest, and he's now with God. But uh, he used to have experiences of sciatica, and he would explain how painful it was, and I didn't know what he was talking about. And now I have had this experience this week, so that's why I'm a little bit gimpy, and uh, I hope my friend Paul in heaven will put in some good words for me and uh, make this thing go away. And if any of you have sciatica help or advice, I'm all ears. All right, let's talk about the whole kingship of Jesus. What does this mean? You know, we have in the rectory this beautiful statue of Christ the King, and there he is with all the glorious robes and the crown, and it seems so incongruous to call him the king. And what does it mean? And then you read in this first passage from Daniel, his kingdom shall not be destroyed. His dominion is an everlasting dominion. I don't know if you had a chance to watch when it was going on the funeral of Colin Powell, the great general and secretary of state. But one of the more beautiful testimonies during all the wonderful speeches about him was made by his son, Michael. And as he talked about his dad, Colin Powell, he talked about the fact that he was the gentlest of men, that he was a sweet, loving, incredible husband and father, which in some ways, when you think of him as a guy who fought the good fight in Vietnam, and then went on to be the hero of the first Iraq war, the one we we successfully fought. 
and how he was a great hero after that, and as well as his work as national security advisor and the first African-American secretary of state. Remarkable in so many ways, but a powerful, powerful man. You would think, if anything, that he's going to be like, um, who's the character? Uh, oh, General Patton. Right? If you've ever seen the movie, George C. Scott plays him as this take-no-prisoners, hard, hard man. Apparently, Colin Powell was none of that. Was he a great general and a great leader? Absolutely. But I'm going to suggest to you that part of his greatness was that in his real life, he was a gentle man. In his real life, he was loving and expressive of that love. It seems to be in some ways counterintuitive, right? This great general, this great leader of men and women who nonetheless was a gentle man. But I think there's an insight in celebrating Colin Powell that we might get as well in Jesus. His kingship is a kingship in that he's over and above every other person in the universe, not because of what we normally think of kings as being. Great leaders of armies, great powerful figures, people who can crush their enemy, And there's Jesus doing exactly the opposite, forgiving those who persecute him, suffering terribly, owning our sins, carrying our burdens, being a gentle, loving savior of the world. Well, how can that be a king? Because we have this misguided idea that kingship or leadership is somehow connected to earthly power. When Jesus so clearly says later on when he's talking to Pilate, hey, my kingdom is not of this world. He is a king, but he's a king in the ways that really matter. He's the king of gentleness, the king of kindness, the king of mercy, the king of love that is truly unconditional. Let's go to that second reading, the book of Revelation, where Jesus, in defining his kingship, says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, which means I'm the beginning and the end. You and I were sent into this world by God himself. He made us wonderfully, uniquely made, And then he put us in the world on purpose. You and I are not some strange accident. We're meant to be here. And we were sent here by God himself. That's the Alpha who sends us into the world. The Omega is the God who's there to greet us once we die on earth and we go to him. And he says to us, kind of like uh, Ed Koch used to say, the mayor of New York, when he'd say, how am I doing? Well, our God says, I gave you life. How well did you use it? And the king then will judge us and evaluate the kind of life that we lived. And it's so important for us to keep in mind that's our final destination. I think some of us continue to live as if this story on earth is the whole story. And oh my God, it's not. It's a small part of our eternity that we'll spend with God. And Omega, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end means our God's there at the beginning. And in his kingship, he'll be there in the end to judge and evaluate us. Two stories I want to share with you. Uh, One is uh, Gene Taylor. You may never have heard of him. He's a congressman from the south side of Mississippi. And in a very Protestant state, he's a very devout Catholic, a Democrat, a pro-lifer. But I mention him because his first day in Congress, something interesting happened. It was a party line vote, and they were going to vote on whether or not taxpayer money should be used to pay for people's abortions. Now, the Speaker of the House was a Democrat. The House was Democratic at that point. Speaker Tom Foley was the Speaker of the House. But it was understood that this was a party line vote. And if you were a Democrat who wanted to have success in the party, you better vote with the party for funding for abortion. So he's noontime, sworn in Gene Taylor as the new congressman. And then he goes to the floor and his first vote is against his party, is against money, taxpayer money to pay for abortion. And in the press conference later on, he has with Speaker Tom Foley standing right next to him, Uh, the first question is, how do you expect to be successful in Congress when you vote against your own party's interests on this abortion vote? And he says, Gene Taylor, uh, with all due respect to the Speaker of the House, Mr. Foley, one day this congressman is going to die, and I'm going to stand before God. And he's going to ask me, Gene, did you know that it was wrong to pay for abortion to in any way affirm the taking of human life? And I'll have to answer, yes, I knew it was wrong. And at that point, my friendship with the Speaker of the House won't matter at all, because the Speaker of the House can't get me to heaven. Only my own conscience can. A good reminder to us all that what we do on earth matters, and that one day the king of the universe will be there as judge and evaluator, and he will say to us, did you know the right thing to do? 
then why didn't you do it? In a similar way, Governor Hugh Carey, the former governor of New York, while he was governor, identified as pro-choice, and uh, he was in sync with many, many things at the church. He was a good Catholic guy, except on that issue. But at the end of his life, once he retired, he became a vocal person for the right to life. And in one of my interviews with Governor Hugh Carey, I said, how come? What changed you? And he said, Monsignor Jim, I'm aware of the fact that none of us get out of this life alive. And I'm going to die one day. I'm going to stand before my judge, my God, who will say, did you know the truth? And I did. Even when I identified as pro-choice, I knew the truth. I know that life is sacred, life is a gift from God, but for political reasons, I went the other way. But thank God I've got some time to make it right, and I want to use the rest of my life to remind myself and the world that life, from womb to tomb, is worthy of respect. You know, whether it was Gene Taylor in Mississippi or you, Carrie, in New York, they all recognize the kingship of our God. He is Alpha and Omega. He's there at the beginning, and he's going to be there until the end. And our job is to get right with God by recognizing that when we stand before the king, we want to say the right things, that he gave us life, and we use that life well. Finally, let's go to the Gospel of John. My kingdom does not belong to this world. You know, we have fooled ourselves into believing in so many ways that this is the whole story. And if you're successful here, whether it's in money or politics or power or position, that somehow or another that gives our life meaning, but boy, do we miss the point entirely in believing that. When, when Jesus in the Beatitude says, when you stand with me, when you're kind and merciful, a peacemaker and loving, I promise you, your reward in heaven will be great. Remember, he never says that while you're on earth, you stay with me, and boy, you're going to get so many rewards. There's this whole uh, movement in some Christian churches that, you know, if you stand by the gospel, you're going to have great earthly success. I don't know where they got that from, because our God says just the opposite. You stand with me in earth, and I promise in heaven you will be richly rewarded, because as Jesus says to Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. We are called on to be ready to meet him by living a good life here, but not promised in any way that we're going to be receiving great reward in this world. And we fool ourselves into believing, if I just do what God wants, it's all going to be right here and now. That's not his promise. It never was his promise. His victory comes at the end of time, not necessarily in this life. And how do we get there? How do we celebrate his kingship? by remembering what a true king is. Not a powerful person in this world, but a person of character in this world so that our personal and permanent home can be in heaven. You know, I don't know if you watch The Crown, but if you do, there's a great scene when Charles is complaining about how he wants to leave Diana to go to the true woman he loves, Camilla. And his mother isn't having any of it, Queen Elizabeth. And she's saying, do you want to be king someday? And he says, yes. And she says, then realize you've been richly blessed But with that blessing comes responsibility to be a person of character and to do the right thing, Charles. Well, the words of Elizabeth could be the words of our God. You've been blessed. I've been blessed. We're called on in the kingship of God to have character, not someday, but today, to live the values that our God teaches us. I've just come from finishing the interview with Bubba Watson. And and in his book, Up and Down, he says, the great golfer who won the Masters twice, he says, You know what I realized, my moment of conversion? I thought golf was everything. I thought what you do as a sportsman was everything, and it's wonderful, but it's far from the whole story. I now recognize, he said, that what gives my life meaning, what gives my life purpose, is my God and being faithful to the things of God. I realized that when God gave me Angie, my beautiful wife, and Caleb and Dakota, my two beautiful children, there was the meaning of life. And then when I stand before God, he's not going to give a hoot that I played a great game of golf. But he's going to say to me, Bubba, how good at you were following Christ the King, of recognizing the kingship of God is found in service and love and devotion to your God and to your family. Bubba found out, just as Gene Taylor found out, and Governor Carey found out, and I hope Prince Charles has found out, that what matters is not what we win on this earth. The kingship of God is not about the here and now, 
The kingship of God, as he says to Pilate, is not of this world, but of the world to come. So where do you stand? Are you really thinking and hoping that it's all about here and now? Because, boy, if you are, you and I could be finding ourselves very much unhappily before the God who is king of heaven and earth. But if we can say, I recognize the good life is lived by my faithfulness to you, Lord, my faithfulness to your teachings, my willingness to suffer with you in this world so that I could celebrate with you the world yet to come. That's our true home. That's our kingship. That's what it means to celebrate Christ the King. Not to embrace this world, but to recognize in denying the things of this world, we earn the kingdom of heaven. Now, on other thoughts, just one simple one. I realize at Thanksgiving there are many people to thank, and I want to thank two particular people. One are all the religious men and women I've known, the priests, the deacons, the sisters, who have helped me to learn and to grow my faith. And I've mentioned to you before, recently I've been praying a lot for Sister Mary Angela Buser. She was a BVM, a member of the Blessed Virgin Mary community based in Dubuque, Iowa. But they came to beautiful West Hempstead and taught us, and she was my principal. But she taught me not just in terms of academics. She was a woman who loved God and demonstrated the love of God in gentle ways with an authority that never involved hitting anybody. She didn't need to. She had moral authority. She was a great religious woman. She just recently went home to God. And I am so grateful for her and every religious woman and man who has populated my life. And I pray for her certainly at Thanksgiving. And I also pray this weekend for my dad, Nicholas Lasanti. This weekend, the 21st of November, my dad would have been 101. He would have finally caught up with my mom. He was a couple months younger than my, my mother. He never let her forget that, constantly telling all of us that he married an older woman. But I mention that because my dad, was the best caretaker in the world. My mom suffered through so many surgeries, almost lost her life many times, breast cancer, heart bypass. And this man, this strong ex-Marine, this uh, New York City detective, this lawyer guy, uh, would do anything he had to care for and to love and to nurture his beautiful wife, who, thank God, remains with us in this world. And she's here, I believe, because of God's grace, but also the care that she got from my wonderful dad, this macho man who had a heart of gold. So when it comes to Thanksgiving, we all have so many people to thank, but I'm praying especially for Sister Mary Angela Buser, who taught me what religious life should really be all about. And I want to pray for my dad, Nicholas, 101 years old, celebrating that in heaven. And dad, thanks for all the care you gave to mom. And she's still with us, if you can believe it or not. She says sometimes, daddy must be so ticked off after all that care he gave to me. And I'm still here while he's in heaven. But I think, Mom, he's delighted that you're still here because it was his nurturing that made it all possible. So, Sister Mary Angela, thank you. Religious men and women, thank you. Priests and deacons who touched my life, thank you. Dear Dad in heaven, thank you so much for teaching me the power of compassion, the power of love, the kingship of Jesus made real by the kindness in our hearts. Not the power of this world, but the power of mercy and love in this world that leads us to the kingdom of heaven. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now, with confidence in the love and mercy of God, 
we offer to our God our prayers and petition, knowing that in his time and in his way, the Lord always hears us and responds. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer that the church, the communion of saints growing together in holiness, may be a reflection of the heavenly kingdom on earth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Pope, bishops, and all church leaders may reflect God's truth and love to the world by the integrity in their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all nations may honor Christ the King as the only Lord and giver of life, and in his name, abolish the practice of abortion and euthanasia, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those in our parish and family members who are ill may enjoy the consolation of the Lord and the presence of their loved ones, especially Charles Barhold, Anthony Di Giovanni, Joe Amoran, Dana Sloan, Carly Fragala, we pray to the Lord. For all who have died, especially Peter Francis Kearns IV, Richard M. Bloomberg, we pray to the Lord. And for the intention of this Mass, Anne Marie Conroy, Anthony Canzanella, Edward Wardry, whom we remember at this Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I want to pray for a number of people who are sick in body, mind, or spirit who've asked us to pray for them. I pray for Tom and Kathy Forbes. I want to pray as well for Joanne and Larry Lostoco. I want to pray as well for some new names that have come in, Dominic Foresto. I pray for dear Marilyn Rupert. Marilyn is one of the founders of this great parish of Our Lady Lords. I know she's getting ready to go home to God. What a great, great lady. I pray for her and for her husband, Charlie, and the whole family. I want to pray as well for Michelle DeHart, and uh, let me pray for a number of people as well who are struggling. I want to pray for uh, Peter Visconti, Bill Kershoff, Margaret Lasanti, Doug Ahodo, Barbara Turley, baby Emily Quart, for Penny Grace, pray for Barbara Truglio, for Edith Consiglio, for Mary Littress, Veronica Tucker, Thomas Lauer, Carol Nolan, I pray for all those who are suffering from addiction. I pray for Kevin Shields, for George Gill, for Michael Cataldi, for Michael Cardone, for Charlene Eisencraft, Noah Torelli, Laura Lishan, Georgie Ritter. I pray for Al and for my dear friend um, Angelo Clemente. I pray for Gary Hudson, for Jean Lusich Dwyer, Michael Campagna, Laura Elizabeth Steele, Anthony Postorino, Dennis Sweeney, Amelia Alarca, Bob Telasco. Pray for my good friend Vern, for Rita Pizzi, Marilyn Segulo, and for Sean McGrail. I pray for Steve Gagliardi and for Kevin Byan. Pray for Byron DeMilo, for John Rogers, Judy Crum. Let me pray as well for Dorothy, the mom to Sheila Blanchard, for Russell Castro Giovanni. I pray for uh, Roseanne Simone, Barbara Simone, for baby Henry Grayson. I pray for Loretta Sweeney. I pray for Jim Harmon and Anthony Scotto, who had a successful surgery for heart bypass. Heidi Ignoski, Judge Tony Falanga, dear friend, Van Tutwiler, Tommy Swengros, Cecilia Lasanti, Leanne Lasanti, Vita D'Amico, Jim Barr, Ron Citrano, Howie Pomerantz. I pray for Anthony Kremi, for Nancy Lang, Joan Donovan, Dean McDonald. I pray for Marilyn Arbogast, Nancy Palumbo, Pat McTaggart, Melissa Bergman, Ann Mindis, Nick Castellano, and Jorge Clemente. For Anthony Ponti, for Emma Nicole, for the continued recovery of my friend Kevin Boyle, for Jean, Jean Glessing is now in heaven. I pray for Marilyn Augustine Catherine, for Lacey Ward, for Michael Messina. I pray for Marion Barone. I pray for all of our public servants. I pray as well for Millie Bolando, Marie Tenay, Marlene Keenan, Bella, Bella Glauda, Bill Franca, Dennis M. Down, Jennifer Murphy, uh, Jamie Scotto, Dennis Donovan, Carly Fragula, and for John O'Brien. And among those who have died, I'm remembering as always Sophia Maglione, Nicholas Delario, Bill Kelly, Catherine and William Donovan, Richard Rosmarin, Billy and Michael Sarasoli, Don Spitali, Lorraine and Ray Campbell, Nicholas and Sally Cordero, my dear friend Corinne Locke. I pray for John, Maureen, and Ann Raber, Joseph McGrath, Arlene Wolfarth. Marion Ed Raver, Chuck DeHart, 
I pray for John Slade and Mary and Joseph Monopoly, John and Alma Kappa, Thel Morali, John Neeson, Michael Manzella, Kenny Bolando, Cristino Formato, Cynthia Prague, Caroline Dodoro. I pray for Gaetano, Sal, and Angelo Emelo, for Anthony Preziosi and Kevin Brown, for Pauline Romano and Ed and June Jandovitz, Mary and Charlie Nobile, Linda Nobile O'Brien, Sam and Rose Pecora, John Simone. I pray for Arlene Romano and for Marjorie Geary. Let me pray for Nick Sabo, for Nicholas James Albert, Albertson. I pray for Luigi Antonio Rosmini, for Gemma Stumpa Rosmini, for Anne Maria Tanay, Billy Taylor, Monica Kerrison, Regina Robinson, Robbie and Jim Purick, Jimmy Soldo, uh, Joan and John Donnelly, for Henry Meyer, for Richard Jackal, for Barry Champney, for Colin and Tommy Ryan. I pray for Eleanor Mazzi, Monsignor Jack Alessandro, Brian Hussey, Suzanne Scanio. I pray, pray for my dear friend, Lynn Lane. This is her sixth anniversary in heaven. Let me pray for Mary Rose and John Brosnan, Leon Sherman Jr., Ronald Chiapo, Kate Kelly, Marie Sicola, Norbert Bobby Gomez, Connie and Sal Cusimano, Ted Scorcia, Monsignor Tom Spadaro, my first mentor in priesthood, Vincent Castoria Jr., Jerry Monk, Dave Robin, Thomas O'Shea and Matthew Torriello, Marie Austin, Emily LaFasso, Vita Palmieri, Kathleen Smith, John Arturi, Raymond Kennedy, Connor and Will Robles, and I pray for Mary Ohoto as well. For Luigi Conti, for Tracy Wachowski, for Dale Louise Odom, Joe and Marion Bacigalupo, Elmer Schantz, Pat Sestar, Alex Haliasos, Marvin Klein, Peggy Barr, Jerry and Edward Casal, John and John McMacken and Raymond Hussey, Judge Don Belfi and Tino DiBello, Nicholas Lasanti, my dear dad, happy birthday, dad, Father Joe Lukaszewski, Joe and Joan Largan, Father Ken Marks, Ed Alma, Paul Stashut, and all the Stashut family, Tim Hurton, Marilyn Salonia, I pray for Gary and Mike Scorcher, Nick Martone, Constance Polio, Jerry and Edward Pangallo, Captain Tim Murray, Dottie Lauer, Norma Calabrese, John Glauda, Joseph Lovett, Marie Casavecchi, Carolyn Duvall, Scotty and Nina Passarelli, Bob and Pat Caliban. I pray for Joe and Peggy Bauman, for Tom Sully O'Sullivan. I pray for Joseph P. Callahan and Lynn Lane, as I mentioned her anniversary is today, Ed Birch, who was such a good companion to Lynn. Pray for Peter Gannon, Margaret and Katie O'Connor, Ben Julik, Tommy Engelhardt, Victor and Lillian, Bobby and Marge, Tom and Helen, Barlow and Ethel. I pray for Edward Riker, Danny Carlson, Luke Johnson, Evelyn Lilicki, PJ O'Rourke, Frank Kilgannon, Robert and Joan Cook, Anna Gomes, Paul Struzieri. I pray for Anna and Peter Canal, Leonardo Playa, Donata Forlenza, as well as um, uh, and Aniello Farrello, Ferrara, and Joseph as well, for Marie Hoyecki, for Christine Lisa, for Marion Harrington, for Sister Mary Angela Buser, for Marie Gail Penny and Margaret Freeland. I pray for Michael A. Diorio, Captain John Minatoli, Louise McNeil, Lena Lasanti, Mary Yuli, Genevieve Minatoli, Virginia Dennert. I pray as well for uh, Christopher Laybourne and Richard Fasano, Adina Placido and Helen Kadash. I pray for my dear friend Jack Carroll, for Madeline Alari, Anna Malandro, James Eady. I pray for all the people you and I have loved and lost, that they might be happy in heaven. I pray too for the protection of all of our men and women in the armed forces. I pray for all of our first responders, our police, our firefighters, our EMT, praying especially for Thomas Scanio and for uh, dear Connor Lasanti. I pray too for all those doctors and nurses out there fighting COVID, for all those who have fallen victim to COVID and for a cure and an end to this pandemic. I pray for your special intentions in mine and we turn all these over to our advocate before her son, Mary, our mother in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death, amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer. 
which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from all of my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice will be found acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands to the praise and the glory of his name for our good and the good of all his church. Lord God, we offer you the sacrifice by which your Son reconciles mankind. May it bring unity and peace to a needful world. And we ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. With your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. You anointed Jesus Christ, your only Son, with the oil of gladness as the eternal priest and as our universal king. As priest, he offered his life on the altar of the cross, and he redeemed the human race by this one perfect sacrifice of love. As king, he claims dominion over all creation, that he may present to you his almighty Father, an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice and love and peace. And so now with all the choirs of angels in heaven, we proclaim your glory and we join in their unending hymn of praise. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed. You are the fount of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts of bread and wine to make them holy so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death which he freely accepted out of love for us, Jesus took bread in his sacred hands and gave you, Father, thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, Jesus took a chalice filled with the fruit of the vine. Again, Father, he thanked you for your goodness, gave the chalice to his disciples and friends, and he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. When we eat his bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, our Lord. 
Lord until you come again. In memory of Jesus' death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that by partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we might all be united as one family through the grace of the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and make us grow in love together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, along with all the bishops, the clergy, the religious, and all of God's people. We ask you to bless and remember all of our brothers and sisters, all of our relatives and friends who've gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all and make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her devoted spouse, and with all the saints and martyrs and angels who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son and our brother, Jesus Christ the Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. It is so easy to get attached to the things of this world. Who doesn't love things and wants to hold on to this life forever? But he tells us again and again, our true home is in heaven, that the kingship of God is lived out by our generosity in this world so that one day we can enjoy the kingdom of heaven in the real heaven, the forever heaven, eternal life. I want to go there and so do you. And in that hope, let's pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you my peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live and reign, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, we eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring us condemnation, but health in mind and in body. My friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word 
and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to share in everlasting life. Our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there. I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Just a, a couple of announcements. You know, this week I had a, a good conversation with a woman named Marilyn, who's a little bit older than me and retired, and a, a good young lady named Kara, who's a student at a local university. And they both said the same thing. I want to do volunteer work. And I, I recommended both of them look into religious ed or the parish outreach program. There's so many ways to serve, but uh, they both are embracing the call to each one of us to give some part of our time every week to trying to make the world a better place by their volunteer activities. So in Marilyn and Kara, I draw great hope. And that's not just an invitation for some, it's an invitation for all of us to look at our 168 hours a week and say, how much time am I spending on me? And is it possible I can spend some time on, on God's plan, uh, the people of God, by volunteering in some way to make the world a better place? So. Uh, in honor of Kara and Marilyn, I invite everyone to think about volunteerism and how each parish needs good people to step forward to do something to make a difference for the good. As always, I want to invite you to join us on Personally Speaking with Monsignor Jim Lasanti on YouTube. This week, my guest is the great Ben Stein, uh, you know him from TV and the movies and his whole great personality. When Ben Stein's Money was his popular show for years, but he talks beautifully about the sanctity of life and he talks about uh, the beauty of his adopted son, Tommy. It's a, an older interview I did, but I wanted it replayed because it's so good. And uh, he is so good. He's a member of the Jewish faith and talks about what that means to him as well. Uh, ben Stein is this week. And then next week, I want you to listen to William McGurn. Bill McGurn uh, is an op-ed page writer for the Wall Street Journal. Uh, he's been a speech writer for uh, uh, President w uh, George W. Bush. Uh, Rupert Murdoch, any number of, of power players, but importantly, he is a man of great faith. He's a man uh, who takes his great faith seriously by putting it into action and talks about the decision of his, uh, his wife and he to adopt three children from China and the great joy that those young lives have brought into his life. Uh, Bill McGurn, a great writer, a great Catholic, and uh, a wonderful presence in the Wall Street Journal and the media. So uh, next week, William McGurn, please listen to him. This week, Ben Stein. And remember when you go online to watch this program, to remember to hit a like and subscribe because that makes all the difference in the world. So please do us a favor to spread the word about this mass and that we offer daily mass. So many of you keep saying, please keep the mass going, we want to do that. But we need more people to watch and be part of our, our parish family by praying with us. Join us at Our Lady of Lourdes every day for mass and uh, we can't wait to pray with you. And speaking of prayer, let's do that now. Lord and God, you give us Christ, the King of all creation, as food for everlasting life. Help us to live by his gospel and bring us one day to the joys of the kingdom of heaven, where he lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you and your families. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.
Jesus Christ, our sovereign King, who is the world's salvation, all praise and honor to we bring, and thanks and adoration. Christ Jesus, Victor, Christ Jesus, Ruler, Christ Jesus,